Welcome back to Heroes Next Door. Thank you all for joining us. We are doing a station rigs today with Piermont Fire Company in Piermont, New York, 18 miles north of New York City. This is a station rigs on their rescue. I'm working with Danny. He's the second assistant chief. He's going to be walking us around and telling us what he has in this. This is a multi-purpose vehicle. We uh, use this for our hang rescue team, our dive team, our marine unit, and also for uh, JAWS calls. Okay, so this is pretty much a rolling toolbox. That's correct. Man, this is awesome. This one is a 2007 with a rescue one body on the, on the back. Okay. How about we take this back to the shop, pull it in, and let's do a walk around so the viewers can understand what you guys have this set up. Sounds good to me. All right. Sometimes I got to get started again. And get everything. I got so much information that's going on in my head when I'm listening to all you guys. Especially today. Yeah. <laughs> You mind walking me around and show sure. me what you got in the cabinet? Sure. For being such a big truck, this thing rode awesome. Yeah. So the, we looked at the cab up front. Yep. Now these are just kind of working our way down the driver's side. How do you have this all set up? This is basically a toolbox on wheels. This is this side is basically all extrication Okay. in these two compartments. Then we have our high angle rescue. And then we have our, our fast team and our active shooter okay. equipment so there. What kind of equipment do you have for vehicle extrication? We have uh, the Hearst Jaws of Life. We have a spreader, a cutter, and then we also have rams. We have a set of chains. We have um, Sawzall, and then we have some hand tools. And these are, are they pre-connected? Yes. Do you have to drop? Yes. No, they're all pre-connected. We actually use, we like the hydraulic units because we train our dive team members to use a Hearst tool underwater. Oh, wow, I've never actually heard of that before. We used, so. I used the Jaws of Life underwater in 1991 for a tractor trailer up to Tappan Zee Bridge. Okay, I didn't even know they could do that. They work, but it, yeah, they work very using, well. Using hydraulics, yeah. It's a closed system, so right. they work very well. Right, and then the cabinet next to it, you yep. said there's more extrication stuff? Yeah, we have, uh, we have our wheel chocks, we have our Paratec system here. Okay, your struts, yep. yep. And we have, a, a, if we have to take the Jaws on the boat, we have a portable unit here okay. that we'll actually take and put on the boat. Okay, so these jaws could go yes. with the system. If, if we had to go on a boat, the, the hydraulic system comes off of here, and then we take all of that and throw it on the boat. Okay. We also, we also have a pump for dewatering, which we do a lot of. Last week, we did over 20 pump outs. We had a nine foot storm surge. Okay. So, so yeah, being here right on the Hudson, you guys yeah. get a lot of flooding Absolutely. come up over. Yeah. So. Absolutely. You know, when you go to the different houses to do pump outs, do you charge them at all? Or Not is that just all. a free nope. service nope. because they're part of the community? Absolutely. They pay enough in taxes, so it's a, it, it's a free uh, system that we do for them. That's kind of nice. Yep. You know, not many fire departments are doing that anymore. No. You know, they say call a plumber or whatever. But yeah, you, not us. We can't. I mean, how, how do you do that? Yeah. Right. You know? <laughs> right. Especially living on the river. We've been doing it since I've been in the firehouse 40 years we've been doing it. So. That's awesome. I appreciate that. Yeah. Okay, behind that is what? This is all our high angle rescue gear. We have different rope, all the, uh, all the rigging bags, and a lot of guys and girls on the team, they have their own uh, equipment, like their belts. They get a backpack, they get a, a, a set of coveralls and boots. Okay. And a helmet. So coming in you know, to this, I noticed that it was kind of mountainous, but yes. is that what you're doing high angle for? You don't have a whole lot of high rises. No, well, we have, uh, we have two high-rises over uh, in Piermont Landing, okay. and that was actually the reason we started the team, because if we had to get on the North Shore walkway, we might not be able to get on there, especially if, you know, this time of year, if there's a lot of snow. So we set up a system on the roofs to where we could repel down and do a uh, roof rescue from the north side, and the tie-offs that we have up there are, are rated for mountain or high-angle rescue. Right, right. You also have a bridge. Is that part of your your coverage area? We, we go there mutual aid. Yes, okay. yes. But the main part of our team is we do a lot of mutual aid to uh, Jersey. Okay. So we'll actually go down by boat and we'll swim in with the high angle rescue gear on. Really? And climb the mountain. Now if, that's something yeah. I've never heard of before. We're, going we're, in by boat. We're very unique. <laughs> and um, behind this, obviously, it's an EMS cabinet. I can tell by the nice well, label on the side. Yeah. 
<laughs> this is basically our FAST team cabinet. Okay. Um, we, and what does FAST stand for, for those that may not know? Basically the, the RIT team, the Rapid Intervention Team. Okay. But here we call it a FAST team. Okay. Basically it's a firefighter assist team. If fire, firefighter goes down, we go get them. Yeah, yeah. And with the good part about us is, you know, we're, we're a true rescue company. A lot of us are EMTs. Like we had a fire a couple of weeks ago, they, it was a fatal fire. Basically, they pulled them out and we worked them okay. with, the, with the medic units right. that were on scene. It's good to have that you know, service. And yeah. I think the NFPA regulations are saying that any structural, uh, confirmed structure is supposed to have some kind of RIT or FAST team. And, and we're, we're a FAST team for a lot of the departments around here. Okay. Plus, also, some of the departments, we go as a FAST team and we roll a squad. So that way, if they need an engine company or a truck company, we could do both with either or. All you know, right. the rescue, as we get there with the rescue, you know, everybody's got a riding assignment just like on the squad. So we can do either or. You could be a truck or an engine company, okay. whatever they need, or a rescue company. Okay. We have the man in the machine. Like I said before, when we were talking about, uh, we had PL Vulcan. They do a lot of our training. They come once a month. Okay. And, you know, we watched uh, some of their videos, and we set up our own man in the machine system. My son, the lieutenant, he basically set up a whole system to where we have all the props to do the man in the machine. Right. So. And you got some of your K-12 yep. saws down yep. below. We also have uh, um, bulletproof vests okay. for active shooter. Wow. So we train in that. You know, the times have really changed. Yeah. I mean, back when yes. I started, you didn't mm -hmm. even think yeah, about active shooter. No, no. And now you have to have them on fire trucks. You yeah. think that's yeah. a police officer, or that's a, a specialty. We have uh, active shooter gear on here and on the ambulance. Okay. So. Okay. And that includes what? Normally a, a vest and a, a vest helmet? A vest and a helmet. Okay. Yeah. And then we also have uh, trauma kits, and we also have um, quick clot and um, tourniquets. Okay. Um, and do you train with the police department, or you? We're, 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 we're working on that now. Okay. So some, we have three, uh, two New York City cops and an Orangetown cop in a firehouse, and basically they did most of our training. Okay. So, okay. But they, they just, the RPD just sent a few of our police officers to be instructor trainers, so they're gonna, we're going to work with them. Very cool. So. Underneath, it looks like those are just your stop trucks, right? Yep. Okay. Yep. Oh, it's huge back here. Yeah. Too. It's great for getting dressed. <laughs> As we make it in here, we, we even we even list the the equipment to grab for uh, fast team. We have a uh, radioactive meter in here. Okay. Another defib hot and cold packs for, because like next week we're going to retrieve a car out in Hudson River. So when a guys get out of the uh, river, we give him some co hot packs yeah. and. Uh, now, a day like today, it's like minus seven with windshield. Get their like. core temperature up. <laughs> this is part of our um, our dive system. Okay. Uh, that's part of our com ropes. Okay. And these are all the dive bags on the uh, on the bottom. More dive bags in the front. So, with these dive bags, are they specifically um, sized for everybody has specific their own. people? Yes. Okay. Everybody has their own. Okay. This is the thermal recovery capsule I was telling you about. Okay. That's basically for severe hypothermic victims. Right. We stick them in there and it, bring, it, it wicks the water away and brings their core temperature back up gradually. Okay. Okay. So. Now, are you, are these wet suits? Or dry, dry suits. Su we, dry suits. we dive all dry suits with full into Spiro Agas or the Guardian masks. Why would you do that versus Contamination wet proof. Okay. And the, the dry suits also, they keep you a little warmer than the wetsuits. Okay. And the other thing is contamination proof because we also do sewer dives We've done a few sewer dives for our local uh, town. Okay. Yeah, a few years back, they had a broken pipe, and they weren't able to pump it out fast enough because it's gravity fed. So I was the primary diver. Junior was the uh, backup diver. I had to go in, and it, it's almost three stories down in solid human waste, and I had to shut a valve. Oh. <laughs> you Better you than me, my you friend. You could smell it through the mask. <laughs> I can smell it, but, I'm not yeah, even there. Yeah. But I mean, that's that's what we do. We we dive in places a lot of people don't want to dive. Right, right. You know, and really? this this it's set up as a as a um, fire truck basically, a right. fast team truck, and everybody's got a riding assignment. So when you get off the rig, it's rescue roof, rescue can, rescue irons, okay. and rescue hook. Right, right. So what are the bags hanging up here? These are uh, basically when we swim in to shore. They, they, they're uh, wet, uh, dry bags, and we have some radios in there that way we can communicate and not take a $7,000, you know, 
radio in. Right. So. Okay, you got a Stokes basket. Yep. How about up here? What's up? This is a pack tracker. And when we go as a fast team, we'll, that comes off the rig. Usually with the officer, we'll grab that in the camera. And then if somebody goes missing, we'll be able to track them if they have a uh, Scott. Okay. This is a infrared camera that we use on the water. Underwater? On the water. On we, the water. we didn't okay. get that yet. We're working okay. on that this year. <laughs> okay. Yeah, they make they make an infrared camera right. that uh, you can use underwater now. But okay. At 20 grand. Right. So we're working on that. Yeah. Well, if anybody's out there and they yeah. have a little extra cast, they want to help out, yeah. send yeah. them a donation. They can appreciate yeah. it and get the cameras yeah. they need to look underwater. These. This is part of our comm system. Okay. So when divers go down, this goes on a tender, and then two divers can talk to each other, or you could talk to the primary and backup diver. Okay, so is this stays topside, or does this go on the top person? side? Okay, top side. How do you then communicate? Is it Through, like Bluetooth? That's or? a rope. That's a, okay. And that bag there that I showed you, that's a rope. But we just also got we got 70 watt transceivers that go on a diver because we had we had I think five or seven watt, but the amount of sediment that we have in the river. It doesn't work. Okay. So we had to get uh, 70 watt units so it could basically go through the sediment. Right, right, right. Yeah. Man, this is awesome. It, I like the fact that it's nice and high too. This is you great. You can get rate. in your suit yeah. pretty easily then. You know, in a dry, warm environment. When we bought this in 07, the village board, they gave us $250,000. They said, figure it out. Okay. So my my uh, assistant chief at the time, uh, you met him. Jim, Jimbo, yep, and uh, him and his dad, you know, did a lot of hard work and put this rig together. Okay, and, I mean, and you know, it's it's not a Pierce, but it, you know, it works for us. Yeah, yeah. So okay, uh, look, like you got your pipe pole for your rig yep. and stuff like yep. that. Okay, it's packed. We'll make our way around to the passenger side. So these, these bottles are different colors. Yeah. What does that? What do uh, those mean? It it doesn't. It there's nothing. It's just a color of the bottles. Okay. It yeah, it doesn't. Have so no unlike in my yeah. ambulance where I have green is oxygen. Oxygen. No. Gray yeah. is usually yeah. you know a regular SCBA. Yeah. No. These don't mean anything. No. It's just what it's you just the color like. we buy them as. I like the the fluorescence. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. <laughs> now what's the difference between sizes? These are 80 cubic feet. Okay. And these are. Uh, 19 cubic feet. Okay. What's these, the dive these, time on that then? This, it depends on your uh, sac rate time. Okay. Your, your surface air consumption. No, a normal person at, at a um, at a rest, freezing one to two cubic feet a minute, depending on how good a shape you're in. Okay. But as you're working, you know, when, when we're working, we're working in two, three, three and a half knot currents. You're working hard. You know, you might be breathing three to four cubic feet a minute. Okay. So you figure four cubic feet a minute, that's 20 minutes. Yeah. And that's basically a, a backup that you have as the pony bottle. We dive with two bottles. Okay. So when we, ha we have a, a block on the side that if this runs out of air, we switch to that. And with the full face mask, we don't have to pull our mask off or anything. Okay, okay. Now, do you have a way to fill those here at the station or do you have yeah. to send them out? No, we have a fill station too. Nice. This cabinet, this is uh, all of our BCs. The buoyancy compensator. Oh wow! They're uh, Hollis BCs with a stainless steel backplate. We just actually went to these. We switched from uh, a jacket style to the backbladders. It, it seems like it's it's a little bit easier to work with. Like when we work with a car, the jacket style, you got everything in front of you like that. Okay. With these, you just have the straps. Gotcha. It seems like it's a little easier to work with. Okay. And how many setups do you have? We have six there? here, and we have four on the on the marine unit. Okay. And these are the full face masks that we wear. And this has the columns inside of yes, it. Yes, yes. These do. So I've always wondered how you know you communicate. So it yep. just connects to a, a wire that yep. at both sides. Yep. So you have the wire system here. These are the headsets. Okay. And then you push the talk. Push the talk as you go along. Yep. Okay. And how long does it take you to get certified to do a dive rescue like this? Well, what we normally do is we'll start, we have a couple of young people in our program right now that are explorers. So when they turn 16, they join the fire department, but they've already been training for a year or two as an explorer. So when they turn 16, they start the program. And then we start the program, we, they start at open water one, open water two, rescue diver, and they can't become a public safety diver. I can't certify them as a public safety diver until they're 18. Okay. So basically they're training for two years before they become a public safety diver. Okay. And then by that time, two years, you know, we train them, we, we bring them in the river and in, in the shallows. Yeah. They're in a the pool every other week for basically from, we usually try to do from December or November until April or May. And then in the summer, we're in the river. 
every okay. other weekend. Wow, that's awesome. So, yeah, it's something that you know I've never gotten into in my career, but it's yeah. something that is needed in a lot of places. Well, we've been around since 1956, and I don't, <laughs> I don't see us going anywhere yeah. anytime soon. Not with the Hudson right across no, the river, no, no, or no, no, right no. across the road there. And like you know, we we've had a lot of good rescues over the years, you know. Well, we appreciate the yeah, service. This yeah. is an awesome truck. It looks I, like we got one I, more. Cabin I told left, you it was right? a toolbox on wheels. Yeah. So we don't have a we don't have an air pack in the front seat of it of the rig. Okay. So this is usually the officer's air pack. Gotcha. Then we have the personal flotation devices, and then we have the uh, they're basically scaffolding that the divers sit on when they get get ready to go in the water. Okay. And uh, explain to me how it actually works with you know what you have set up, who needs to go, who suits up, who so doesn't you, suit up. Usually what we'll do, I mean, when, when we're responding, basically all the divers that are in the rig, they get their suit on, okay. get ready to go. And you know, the, depending on the degree of difficulty, if it's a difficult dive, usually let senior guys go. You know, if it's a sewer dive, I'm usually the guy that goes. <laughs> so, um, you know, when, when, when you, it, when you're in that environment, you need experience, okay. you know? And you know, if it's a few years back, we were looking for a gun in a pond, we let the junior guys go, you know? But, and that's how they learn. You just, you just keep building them up, building them up. But we all basically train the same way. Okay, you know? so this truck arrives on scene. How do I go about setting it up? How do you, what do you, what do you need to set this whole thing well, up? We have, this is an orchestrated dance, really. We have tenders. Okay. And we have divers and we have EMS personnel. Okay. So basically the tenders, they get the diver ready and then they do the pre-dive check. And then we actually check each other before we go in the water. Okay. You know, you're checking your air on your primer, you're checking your air on your, your pony bottle. You're checking to make sure all, all the straps are rigged because with those, with that system, it's a back bladder. If you don't bring up the crotch strap and snap it in, that back bladder will ride up and drive your face into the water. So you got to make all the make sure all the straps are done. Make sure the mask is working. Okay. Uh, especially this time of year, those, if you get water inside that mask, it'll freeze. Mm. So you got to make sure the mask isn't frozen. Make sure that the diaphragm valve is able to push through air on an exhalation. Okay. So you, it's it's a lot. So you got the setup, and then yep. how many divers do you put in the water? It depends. Okay. If we're like, we're going to dive a car next weekend, we're going to put, you put one diver in. Okay. If we're going to check the car, you got one primary diver, you have a backup diver and you have a 90% diver. Okay. And that's all the time okay. and always a direct line access to the car. So if the, the car is upside down, we're going to set up a three point anchoring system facing the back of the boat to the car. So that way, direct line access into that car. You have a backup diver, so if something goes wrong, he can call for help, and we have a contingency line that clips in from the backup diver into the primary diver's rope. And he's also has a tether line okay. with a comm system. So it's not just the tether line meaning the comms. You actually have basically two wires going to them, two, two ways well, of we have connecting. The, the comm goes through the rope. Okay. All oh, right. it's all connected together. Yeah. Okay. So the, basically, the, the harnesses are set up to where the, the D ring is right in the golden triangle here. Okay. All right. Yeah. So Easy that, to find, that, yep, yep. that way, if I'm, if I'm disoriented, I just swing around. I got my rope. Okay. I know where my rope is. So, and then as we're coming down, we train the divers to do different signals underwater because you can't see anything, you know? Well, like if I'm out of air, I'll do a, a, a 360 and go like that. I need air. Okay. And why do you have, if you're going underwater, why do you have PFDs? Because anybody within 25 feet of the water wears a PFD. Okay. That way, if you fall, hit your head and fall in the water, we'll find you. Right. Right. So. Man, this is an awesome truck. If you want, we could show you what type of suits we wear. Okay. Yeah. Let's pull it up. Danny. Grab, uh, grab one of those suits back there and show them the TLS suits that we wear. So before we get started, what's your name? Uh, Daniel Goswick Jr. Okay. And I am an ex-chief and current lieutenant. Okay. Well, thank you for your service. Thank and you. you're part of the dive team also, right? Correct. And you do you manage a lot of the equipment from what I understand? Yes. Okay. So what are we looking at here? What, what do we have? So this is the uh, TLS DUI public safety dry suit. Okay. With these suits, they're actually military spec, so they have reinforced knees and uh, wow. with okay. the fabric. They have a... Uh, Vulcanized rubber zip seals. Okay. Um, so with, with these seals, if they are to rip, it's easier for us to change out. They're even, actually, the, even the hood? Yeah. Wow. So the okay. hood, the neck seal on the inside, it's double seals. So do you wear a wetsuit on the inside of this too? Or nope. I just get in my clothes or just strip clothes. down to my skivvies and get Whatever in? Whatever you want to do. Okay. <laughs> so some of us have what we call whoobies. They're like a giant onesie. Okay. Fleece lined. So during a winter time, we'll use those or right. 
And this uh, basically they have suspenders, suspenders. and everything. Suspenders, yep. okay. And uh, each suit is customized to the diver, so this one has my name on it with my sizes. Okay. Um, we actually have 22 certified Nawi scuba divers. Wow, okay. Firehouse. Currently three of them are on military leave. Usually if we get a call, we'll probably get at least eight to 10 guys. That's more than most fire companies are getting out for fire calls nowadays. Yeah. So sometimes it's a little battle of who gets an order first. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Senior but, uh, guy versus the new yeah. guy. You want me to put this on, show you? Yeah, can you, if you don't mind. Yeah, that's Just kind of see how it all works together. You know, this is something, we did a die one rescue with South Metro out of, I saw that, out of, yeah, I saw that. Colorado, but we didn't actually get a whole good chance to film how this all works and put together. So sometimes we utilize the uh, the benches like you just saw in the cabinet. Okay. Sometimes you got to stand up and do it. <laughs> Without tipping over. Yes, it's fine. So the feet are actually sealed on there too. Okay. Feet are sealed. And this is actually crushed neoprene. Okay. Suspenders go up. Hold on just a second. Yeah, I'm just give you this. I'm just going to hold it out here for you. Make sure you got a good seal around your wrist. Okay. Turn your head to the side. Turn your head to the side? Turn your head to the side. Okay. So some of these neck seals, especially if you're a bigger guy like myself, they call it a uh, G-neck. Okay. When they customize the suit, they make a bigger hole for you to get your head into. Okay. So. That makes sense. Yeah. In a way, it's shaped, oddly shaped. You have to look towards your one shoulder to get your head in. Okay. So the fact that the zipper's up front, this is you pretty much got dressed on your own. Yep. So the support guys are there for what then? Uh, so to actually double check everything that we do. And what are you doing right now? So right now I'm letting all the air out of my suit. Okay. And that, I saw you pull the neck open. Was that the button to let the air out? So if you push in on this, it'll let the air out. And also if you turn it counterclockwise, it will also let the air out. Okay. As soon as you get in the water, what you want to make sure it's closed or so you can get wet. Okay. Uh, suit inflator. So on the BCs, there's an extra hose. What that allows is for air to get in your suit so there's no pitch points. Okay. And uh, also during the winter time, it allows you to have a gap between the outside of the suit. Keep you a little bit warmer. Yeah, yeah. That, that thermal gap <laughs> of your own body temperature. Yeah. Makes sense. These are our rock boots. Okay. So like we were talking about before with the high angle rescue team, when we go down to Jersey, it's easier for us. When we swim on the shore, we can walk like human beings, make sure we're not rolling our ankles. Right. Stepping on anything sharp, ruining the suits. Okay. <clears throat> Just pull, slide down, and you can wrap it. So, you know, as firemen, we actually practice you know, donning and doffing our gear, you know, and we got to get in it within 30 seconds. Is there a standard that, you know, you would have to do for a dive rescue or anything like that? Um, so for us, especially that we're so close to the marina, unless you're here quick, you, you know, you're kind of getting the rest of your equipment on, on the boat. Okay. Uh, some of us will grab our bags and just get dressed once we get out there. Okay. It's a lot easier. Right. So. So this is our chest harness. It almost looks like a climbing harness. It does, just without the uh, the groin strap. Right. Uh, there's no clips on there. It's just Velcro strap. Okay. I'm gonna pass it through, bring it back around itself, and like the old okay. utility belts. Okay. So here we got a pair of shears, a knife, and when I get on my BC, we're gonna have what we call a golden triangle. Okay. So that will also have another set of shears and a knife, and then we'll have all our gauges. So anything, any kind of emergency, you're gonna go right to your core. Could here you show us how the packs actually go on? Yeah, yeah. We have our ankle weights. Ankle weights, why would you need ankle weights? Uh, so our legs don't become buoyant. Okay. <laughs> These are integrated weight belts. Okay. Are those specific per diver on how much weight there is on each yeah. one of them? So me being a larger guy, especially during the winter time, I use about 30 pounds of weight. Okay. And what's the goal of using the weights? Are you supposed to sink to the bottom? Or? It allows you to co sink down to the bottom. Okay. Correct. And then when you're using the BCD, it allows you to gain your buoyancy. Okay. Um, so one thing that we try to do, especially our divers using diving out in the river or the creeks around here, is you want to try to float off the bottom enough that you're not kicking up all the silt. Okay. So you lose any kind of visibility that you 
did potentially have. Okay, so you want to have it sink fast enough to get down to the bottom, but you don't want to necessarily touch bottom. So when you do go down your first time, okay, you're going to hit the bottom. Okay. Once you hit the bottom, if you're using just the regular ropes, getting your signals, that's when you're going to have to try to get your buoyancy correctly. Okay. Um, and that's all done through the backpack to bring you up yes. and make the yep. buoyancy. So you have your inflator hoses and everything, like I said, we'll, we'll show you in a minute. Interesting. So your fins go right over your shoes. Correct. Okay. So even your fins have to be fitted to whatever shoe size. I mean, you got like a 10 or 11 size shoe. I'm a little nine and a half or eight. So I have a size 12. Yeah. <laughs> I was like. And I use an extra large uh, fin. Okay. So you got mediums, larges, and extra larges. Okay. So with the fins, are there any specific designs that you have for the fins? To yeah, so these are uh, what we call jet fins. They're actually, the seals use the same kind of fins. Okay. Um, if you look at other different style fins, you got longer fins, narrow fins. Um, some are for speed. Uh, if you ever see Free Diver, how they have... Yeah, like three and a half yeah, foot long or, fins or yeah, whatever. So yeah. Those are meant for, for, some, for sport diving. Okay. These are more meant for commercial use. Okay. So this is where that aid that you were talking about earlier comes into play Correct. to help you get all this equipment on. Yep. So while he does that, usually we'll turn on the bottle. I'll look at my gauges. He'll double check them before I get up okay. get towards the water. Sucker belt system, okay. Yep. So then I'll come over here. I'll grab two D-rings. Okay, just like our regular air packs. Yep. So you can pull it down, cinch it up. Rest of the air out. <laughs> I'm going to stand up. And like we were talking about before, you have the strap that goes in between your legs. Okay. One more strap. So pass that to me. Yeah. <laughs> and then, uh, you want to turn it on? So the way we're set up. So unlike our air packs that we use for the fire department, you don't, you can't reach it yourself. You have to have an assistant. Like ours is down low, almost upside down. Correct. For you, it's, it's up top. So we have right here, we have our surface here. We can rotate this again counterclockwise. Okay. So when I put this mask on. Breathe in the air. Okay. And as soon as I close it. Oh, okay. You have your gauge, depth gauge, your compass. And then now I have my inflator. Okay. Deflator. And that inflates that backpack to give right. you that buoyancy you were just telling me right. about. So if I hit this button right here, Okay. So right. you don't have, you know, like a snorkel that you put in your mouth kind of thing. No. So some of these setups, there's one setup that's set up specifically for myself and him. Okay. The one I'm wearing now. We don't have the comms. For us, some of the older guys, we like using the ropes better than the comms. Okay. So we do have our second stage regulators if we need anything that's hooked up oh, to Oh, that's our, what I was talking Okay. So that's what I, when bottle. I think of it, you know, looking at TV shows and stuff like that, that's what I always see them kind of yep. using. So these are blizzards. They're meant for cold water diving. Okay. Okay. So they're more, they're less likely to freeze. Okay. Like we were talking about before with the, uh, with the auger mesh. Gotcha. So one thing what's good about these masks too, if we want to do the, any kind of cleaning, we can take everything apart. Okay. From the, uh, the regulator itself. Do you ever get heads up displays in masks? No. For so diver? You can, but not with the masks that we use. Okay. Uh, so the masks that we use are all guardian masks. Um, we used to use Agas or the Intuspira is what we were talking about before. Okay. Uh, so we got away from them. These with the Guardian Mask, there's a lot more things that we can do with them. So you can put rail systems on here to allow you to hook up lights. Okay. Um, we are looking at a camera system for underneath the water. Maybe a GoPro or something like yeah. that? So overall, when we put on our turnout gear, we got you know anywhere from 35 to 70 pounds worth of gear, depending on how full we fill our pockets. You double that. <laughs> yeah, it's like, what are, you, what are you sitting at right here, give or take? Between the bottle, and especially these BCs that we have now yeah. are a lot heavier than the ones we had before, especially with the stainless steel plates. Okay. There's actually two of them. Okay. You're looking at 100 pounds. A little over 100, probably yeah. 120. Wow. Plus my weights. Okay. So right. when you're in the water, it's different. You don't have that yeah. feeling of heaviness, especially when you get down and you get buoyant. But I can see why you're sitting out on the side waiting for it. Maybe you're the second diver in or something yeah. like that. So Having yeah. some place to sit down and rest on the boat or something like that is going to be important because just standing up can be a workout for you. With the boat, we have a platform, we can get dressed, and it's easier too because we have the BCs, the setups on the boat. We don't have to worry about dragging them out like we used to. 
the one marina, you had to go out about 100 yards to get to the okay. dock, carrying all this stuff. <laughs> right, so. right. But yeah. Man, this is, thank this you setup. so much for showing us this. This is something that, you know, was very unique to you know, rescue services. You know, you have a couple of companies around us that may do it, but not very often. So, you know, I appreciate you, you know, taking the time and showing us. I know I put you through a bunch. No, that's fine. <laughs> putting it on. <laughs> um, but uh, we really thank you. Once again, this was Heroes Next Door. Thank you all for watching. This was Station Rigs with uh, Piermont. Uh, fire company out of Piermont, New York. Thank you all for watching, but before we end, hit subscribe, hit notification, keep smashing those like buttons, and share these videos. We'll see you again next week. We are working with uh, the Piermont Fire Company, which is, again, Enterprise Host? Empire Host Empire Company. Host. Company. All right, we're going to start again. Empire. Welcome back to Here's Next Door. Thank you all for joining us today. We are 18 miles north of New York City. We are at uh, Piermont. Ah, I did it again. Take it again. <laughs> Interesting. Yeah. I'll sit down. Okay. And your air intake goes off? Yeah. <laughs> so these are what we call jet fence. What is that? Are we getting a call? Yeah. Out of Piermont, New Jersey, 18 miles north. Piermont, New York. New York. <laughs>